reversal of the Olympic final. Next up is uh, women's singles, then we'll have men's singles, women's doubles and men's doubles will be the last of our finals this afternoon. So with the women's singles coming up, a chance for us to look at the destination Dubai a ranking list. And I can tell you that even after losing in the first round, Carolina Marin will still remain number one and Sina A will reach the quarterfinal here. She will still be number two. Of course, the Rachinuk Intanon, if she wins today, will go up two places to number three. If she loses today's final, she will go up just one place to number four. And Yui Hashimoto, her opponent in today's final, will go into the top ten of those destination Dubai rankings, whether she wins or loses. So here is the draw from the quarterfinal stage, and I can tell you from the quarterfinal there was only four seeds left in. But the big news was that two Indonesian players came through the qualifying all the way through to the quarterfinal. Maria Phoebe Kusuma Stuti and Linda Weni Fanatri. How well they did, and how lovely to see them both back to form. But Yui Hashimoto beating the 2011 winner of the Indonesian Open in yesterday's semi-final. So it set up a final once again with Arachinuk Intanon. She was beaten finalist last year. Can she go one better this year? Of course, a year ago, Arachinuk Intanon lost to the Olympic champion. Li Shui who incidentally will go out of the top 10 of the Destination Dubai list. So the unseeded Yui Hashimoto of Japan against the number six seed, Arachinuk Intanon from Thailand. she's had so far. Yui Hashimoto, the 25 year old. She put out the world champion in the very first round. The number six seed, Rachinuk Intanon lost out in the final a year ago to the Olympic champion Li Shuerue. Yana of Indonesia will be our rumpar for this one. Tell you of also of Indonesian will be our service judge. So the first duty, the toss of the coin. And with such a drift in the arena here. The winning of the toss, very important and yes. Yui Hashimoto chooses ends and chooses to start that far side of the court. Japanese player turned 25 last month. And today becomes the seventh Japanese player to reach and contest a Super Series tournament final. In fact, the second Japanese player in the final of the Indonesia Premier Super Series tournament. The first being Sayaka Sato back in 2011, the first year of the Premier Super Series. But let's look first of all at the former world champion, the number six seed, Arachinuk Intanon. 20 years of age, down one place in the world ranking this week, two number six. 
has been as high as two, spent 16 weeks as world number two. A win-loss record for the year translates into two previous finals, winning one of them, the Asian Championships. She lost in the final of the India Super Series to Saina Nawal. So this her third final of the year for Ratchanuk Intanon. All of her matches so far have been won in two straight games. A quarter-final against the qualifier, Linda Wenny Funnathri, and the semi-final against the number five seed, Wang Shixian. If you were with us yesterday, you would have enjoyed that match. And indeed, if you were with us on Friday, you would have enjoyed her quarter-final as well, where she really gave a masterclass to the Indonesian player. So to Yui Hashimoto, not seeded 35 in the world ranking, went down five places this week, and she's actually the seventh highest Japanese player. That's absolutely extraordinary, isn't it? She's number 14 on the Super Series list, though, and as uh, I was saying, she will definitely go into the top 10, and by Stina, my reckoning, she will go to number seven after reaching the final here. Only has there ever been two winners of a Super Series title in the women's singles from Japan. Can she make it three? Now just look at who all she's beaten. The number three seed, the current world champion, Carolina Marin in the first game. All of her matches in three game. Her teammate, Minatsu Mitani, in the second round. The qualifier, Maria Phoebe Kasuma Stuti. She had to save a match point against Kasuma Stuti. She came from 9-16 down in the third game. 10 straight points to take her to 19-16. Then had to save a match point at 19-20. It was the most extraordinary match. And the crowd getting heavily involved in that. The semi-final yesterday, it was the last match on last night against the number eight seed, Wang Yi Han, the former world champion and the 2011 winner here. All of her matches in three games, she's been on court a total of four hours, 14 minutes. Her opponent has been on court a total of two hours and 50 minutes. So, as we look at the head-to-head, -head, this is the fourth meeting between the two, but that may surprise some people. The last time they met was last week in the very first round of the Australian Super Series, and it was two straight games to Yui Hashimoto. So, does that make her favourite for this, Steen? No, I don't think it does. Um, I think the playing conditions are different here than in uh, Australia, and uh, we've seen Ratchanok in absolute top form throughout this week. Furthermore, she had more rest yesterday as uh, Yui Hashimoto's match was the last to finish around 10.30pm. Uh, um, and. Uh, it is important when you're playing in uh, a venue where the temperature is as high as it is here in um, Jakarta. Yes, quite an influence, plus the fact that she's been on Ladies court for now and 24 minutes longer than her opponent. Yeah. So the women's singles final last year's beaten finalist Arachinuk Intanon nearest to us against Yui Hashimoto. Hashimoto appearing in her first ever Super Series tournament One, final. Love. And that also might have an effect as well, I guess, Steen as well. So, you know, when you look at all the variables, it, in a way it's stacked against Yui Hashimoto. Less recovery time from the sem semi-finals, more time on court throughout the week here. First experience of the Super Series final. I think actually the match last week is sort of uh, they work as the warning sign for uh, Ratchanok.
Well, the first two times that these two players met each other, obviously won by Intanon, but they both went to three games. The win by Hashimoto last week in Sydney. First time that it's been two straight games. This for Rachnuk Intanon is a seventh Super Series tournament final, a fourth Premier Super Series final, but she's only won one title. That was the India Super Series back in 2013 as an 18 year old. Oh, my goodness, that is magnificent. Well, they were trading clears. One pumping Five, the other's forehand, the other one pumping the backhand. Well, that lovely disguised angled shot across court from Archinok into non absolutely superb. for the last two days, haven't we? And I mean, we've been singing her praises, but her racket skills and her disguise, I mean, we're gonna say it again, it's just a delight to watch, isn't it? Yeah, but, uh, but we also have to acknowledge that she's been playing with a lot more discipline in the beginning of this game. We saw this long clearing rally, and that's normally not what we see Rachinov doing, playing a lot of, uh, in quotation mark, boring shots, mm. putting pressure on her opponents. Um, it's interesting to see if we're going to see more of that. That's going to go wide. Yeah. Five straight points. Oh, my goodness. yesterday, Joe, about the uh, Indian um, sort of amount of top men's singles players and Japan is sort of their similarity in the women's singles. I just uh, counted they have, uh, well, maybe I didn't count well, they have nine players within top 56 on the world rank. Crikey, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, nine players. Good rally. It's 
the log. Just check for me how many Thailand players as well. It's good judgment. Four. Four Thailand players within top 28. Yeah. But I was thinking China because I feel that Japan is challenging China as the uh, dominant women's singles nation. However, China, of course, uh, still got much higher ranked players all within top 10. Yeah. That's a nice angle too, and certainly so far in this match, Arachinuk Intanon has been in total control. And China's got like seven players within top 60, but um, the number one rank, Lishuri. So, more top players. Well played. Yeah. But it's astonishing that a player only ranked seventh highest on the world rankings from their nation is through to the final of a Premier Super Series. It's amazing. And, uh, it seems to be contagious that when one or two of your teammates does well, then uh, the others follow up this kind of confidence that we can actually do this. Yeah. Gone wide. Five, ten. Well, of course, the first ever Japanese winner of a Super Series title was the player that Hashimoto beat in the second round, Hinatsu Mitani won the 2012 French oh. Super Series. That was going out, wasn't yeah. it? I think the point you made, Steen, about the not lack of recovery time, but certainly less recovery time after her semi-final. Yeah, looked very tired after that rally. And of course, she's having to work the muscles so hard to change direction the whole time. And in the hot, humid conditions here, that is very sapping. So a six-point advantage for the number six seed at the mid-game interval. Yeah, and it's very much better atmosphere now the crowd engaged they have their favorites wanting to support one or other of the two players on court whereas in the, yeah. the open, opening lot, match a was, lot more intensity in this yeah. match as well some of her own medicine there. A bit of a slice, creating the angle, taking a bit of pace off the shot.
She touched it anyway. I know it landed in. Smash from uh, Hashimoto there. Yeah. Short. Oh, yes, that's one well play from Hashimoto. I have a sense that she's sort of. Uh, on the brink of uh, getting her game going, Hashimoto. Some sort of um, fine line in between being too tired to sort of uh, challenge Rachinak Intanon and on the brink of getting her game going with a very attacking uh, style and a solid defense, very efficient game. That you're probably right, Steen. I'm going to sense a bit of a comeback here. Nine, Hashimoto losing patience in the end. the short left with that delightful tight spinning net shot. Sort of teases Hashimoto into playing the net first, but unable to get it really close and that gives Ratinak the opportunity to spin it. Oh, wow. that's nice. Yeah. Powerful smashes yeah. from uh, Hashimoto, especially from the backhand corner. Well, not only is this the, her first ever Super Series tournament final, you know, she's never even been in the final of a Grand Prix gold event. No. No, I, I can remember that she was playing the All England, whereas uh, her, her teammate Sayaka Takahashi was playing a, a lower tier tournament at the same weekend. And I was a bit surprised, but uh, I must say that um, the Japanese coaches have uh, chosen right. A 
one of the taller Japanese women singles players, Hashimoto. Yeah. Second game, another element. That there's another one. No, Ooh, no, that's, I challenge that's a that. wrong call. I challenge that. Yeah. She doesn't. That's amazing. That was in. That was plumb on the line. I wonder if she's played on a, a court with Hawkeye before. Yeah, there was yesterday. She played on the same court. Oh, and of there course was Hawkeye she did. As well. Of course she but, did. But uh, if you didn't challenge, then. She probably is unaware of the possibility. Well, really powerful smashes. We're going to see much more of her, Jill. Yeah. I remember the very first time I uh, saw her, I think it was last year. No, it wasn't. It was a couple of years ago when she reached the quarterfinal of the India Super Series event. Well left. And that good judgment brings Slovakian of Ginton on to gain point opportunities. Nine of them, to be precise. Yeah, good judgment again. 21 11. The opening game to the former world champion. Well, look at that, smash plates from this match. An awful lot from Arachino Gintanon going down her opponent's forehand side. I'm surprised at that. Not one single body smash. No. That's, we, we saw it yesterday as well when Arachino was playing uh, Wang Shishan. We didn't have the statistics on it, but um, she very rarely targeted the body. And look how nicely she varies the angle of her smash yeah. down that forehand side. There's some cut down low, you can see some much flatter. Yeah. It's lovely variation. So it's not just going down the forehand side, yeah. it's varied angle. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see uh, the statistics for uh, the next game because this one is actually uh, totally consistent with the side drift that we've seen on the court. But um, it's pretty safe to play it in the left side of the court from where we see it here in the picture. Yeah. Whereas the side drift goes from left to right and makes it a little bit more dangerous to attack that side. But of course these players they've gotten used to the drift here now and and can play the side they just are a little bit more cautious. I'm really Looking forward to seeing this second game because often when you play tough matches and, and have to play again the next day, you sort of need a game to uh, get back into playing rhythm. Oh, oh that's beautiful. 
once again. Wow. The smash is down the forehand yes. side. I think they watch back their match from yesterday, you know, Ratchanuk and her coach, because you were talking about the need to be more clinical from the front of the yeah, court. And yeah, what she's happened been, there? She's been more clinical in her, her game today, playing more clears and attacking a bit more consistently. interesting because I don't know if Japan has sort of handed in their selection for the world championship we saw that uh, we talked about that Hashimoto was only number seven in the Japanese rankings so is she at all selected to play the world championships here in this same hall where she's enjoyed so much success this week yeah I'm not sure well the entries have closed for the world championships already And one thing we can be certain of, I would think, is Okuhara, Yamaguchi, and Mitani. How many are you allowed? You're allowed, allowed maximum three. Maximum three. Well, I should think those are the three. Also oh, because yes. This uh, result is the first really big result for her. Yeah. Well, there's a challenge here. <laughs> Well, she hasn't got one right all week, has she? <laughs> no, not that we've seen. She's normally been challenging in the first game very, very quickly. Yeah. Well, I thought it was close, but it landed in, and indeed I was right. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Ratchinuk, we shouldn't highlight the fact, really, that she hasn't been terribly successful with her challenges. Perfection. Okay, thank you. Play. Good rally, and it's that power play from Hashimoto. That smash you were talking about, Steen, it really oh. is very potent, oh. isn't it? Here it comes again. Twenty-five shots. Five, four. 
just to follow up on the uh, World Championship, um, Hashimoto is not selected by Japan. She's number 31 on the world ranking. That determines the qualification for the World Championships, and that would mean that if she was selected, Japan would only get to uh, name one other player. Now instead, they have three players in the World Championships. But there's a surprise. There's one player who is uh, not selected that uh, you mentioned, Joe. Mitani. No, that is Akane Yamaguchi. Oh. She's not selected. Instead, Sayaka Takahashi is selected. Is it clashing with Junior World Championships? Is that the possibility? There's a possibility of that. Yeah. moment Seven, wonderful disguise Well, that emphasizes the point that you were making yesterday. Went back into the old habits of not being clinical at the front of the court and putting the shuttle away. A little bit loose, yes, but uh, it would have been a wonderful shot. Yeah. A jump cross net drop. <laughs> yeah. What an imagination. Yeah. Yeah, there's no World Junior Championship co uh, colliding with the the senior championship, so it's simply that uh, Akane Yamaguchi had been deselected by the Japanese team. Very interesting, in my opinion. It's amazing, because isn't she number 11 on the world ranking at the yeah, moment? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the court needing some attention. It's interesting, we saw uh, rally lengths just a moment ago, 25 shots. I was watching the French Open tennis yesterday, and the average rally length for the whole of the first set? Um, five shots or something like that. 2.9 yeah. shots. By the end of the second set, it had gone up to three shots, an average of three shots. Longest rally of the match, 11 shots. Even though it's on clay. Yeah. yeah. It's just gone wide. Yeah. Nine, six. Yeah. She's winning an awful lot of points with that smash, isn't she? And there's going to be some players that are happy not to see her in the draw for the World Championships. Yeah. Probably like our defending champion, Carolina Marin. Definitely. Lost in the first round here. And, uh, uh, she, she, would also, she would be facing a, a player with almost the same attacking power as herself, but uh, very, very good in defense and the defensive movement as well. I don't 
think she's going to be successful today, Hashimoto, but um, that's also thanks to this girl here, Rachana Gintanen, who's been playing, uh, in my opinion, a very, very positive uh, style today, where, where she's cut down on a number of these um, beautiful shots, but not so efficient shots, and using more of these kinds of uh, efficient shots. Yeah. And uh, she must be one of the favorites to take the title later this year when we meet again here in Pistola uh, Sanayan. World Championships here in August. Well, our action of Clinton on fans. will be very happy right now second. game up and a four point second. advantage in the second Well, it was a nice idea, wasn't it? Yeah, look at the reaction afterwards. Yeah, she's trying to get herself going. Body smash again. is a run of five straight points. I thought she was playing well yesterday against Wang Shishan, but I think she's playing even better today. Ratchana. More efficient. Not so much sort of beating around the bush, just firing smashes away when the opportunity is there yeah and that I think is is what I've been trying to express over the, at the end of last year when I was talking about she didn't have enough urgency in her style of play yeah. and I think what you've just verbalized sort of sums up what I was getting at now she's she's putting away the winner she's going for smashes when the opportunity presents herself yeah. and it is she's playing much better because of it Oh, that was short. Very lucky she got away with that incident. But, uh, I also think that uh, Hashimoto is about sort of to realize the writing on the wall. She's going to be a very, very good runner up in this tournament. run comes to an end but those seven straight points I suspect you're right Steen I think that is the decisive move in this final yeah, what, what Hashimoto should of course hope for now is that <laughs> sort of this, uh, sort of um, goes back to this a little bit more playful mode creates a few 
errors and uh, a few easy winners for Hashimoto so she can get back in it. But she needs to go to around 12 or 13 points now. That's that's really well played. That's so amazing. Wow. Yeah. So is that two body smashes now or d body attacks? Uh, three. Three. of the last 10 points. 18. Has she lost the game in this tournament, uh, Rachana? No. All of her matches what up to the final. Tournament. Yeah, straight games. Longest match so far was the semi-final yesterday against Wang Shoshian, 50 minutes. And she didn't have a chance, she didn't have a chance Wang Shoshian at all. No. Well, we said on quarterfinals day it was a master class. I think it's a master class again today. Yeah, Superb. points, opportunities. delaying the inevitable. finalist a year ago this year the undisputed champion as you say Steen it is remarkable her performance throughout the week congratulated by her coach well her form coming good at exactly the right time 
umpire confirms the scoreline 21 11 21 10 and a second super series title for Rakshan of Intanon to go with the India Open from two years ago but it's her first ever premier super series title for this young lady from Thailand this is how she won it in the final rally the slice that's been so effective especially down her forehand side and yet another angled disguise shot well when she plays like that she really is the complete package Rachan of Hintanon In Tanon, uh, Yin Di Dwai Krab, congratulations for your winning here. Indonesia must have loved you so much. How, the, how do you think the game was going before? Was it really tough? I think the game was going before. So, when I was in the game, 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 I was in ดีใจค่ะที่มีคนกองเชียร์แล้วก็คอยเรียกอินทนนท์ตลอดค่ะว่าเกมเป็นยังไงการแข่งขันเป็นยังไงมั้งก็เกมการแข่งขันคือคู
Well, on her way through to the final, Hashimoto beat the current world champion and a former world champion. She's had a tremendous week, but I think those four previous matches all going to three games took their toll. Krachenuk Intanon, the second Super Series title and a second title this year to, uh, to the Asia Championships. So our next final is men's singles and the defending champion, Yano Jorgensen, against the young left-hander from Japan, Kento Mamota. Then we'll have women's doubles with the Indonesian involvement. And to finish off this afternoon, we'll have men's doubles. The world champions, uh, Gosu Hyung and Shin Pek Chol, up against Fu Hai Fang and Chang Nan. Chang Nan, of course, having beaten the beat in the first of our finals this afternoon. So with the men's singles coming up next, we can look at the destination Dubai Super Series standings at the moment. And you will see four Chinese players, uh, two Danes and two players from India. And both the Indian players will go up after this week in Indonesia. Kashyap Paropali after his semi-final will go up two places to number seven. Ashrikant will swap places with Lindan. Lindan lost in the first round, of course, so he's going to go down to six. And Ashrikant will go up to five. But Iviano Jorgensen can win today's final against the number three on that list. Iviano Jorgensen will go to number one 
on the Destination Dubai ranking.